Hi, welcome to Facebook Live, Ask Admissions, and really today should be Ask Enrollment Services minus the Registrar. Um, but uh, my name is Jordan Stevenson, I'm the Director of Student Recruitment, and I have a very special guest and good friend with me today. You. Yeah, you want to tell me my name? Yeah. I'm, I'm Ron Day, the Director of Financial Aid. And that was short and sweet, and I expected Ron to say more. That was awesome. Do you I love it. No, no, it was clean. Time? It was so clean. It was like Ron Day, Director of Financial Aid. I love it. So this is a really special Facebook Live. Not only is Mr. Ron Day here, and he's a big deal, and he doesn't like this, but but he'll t he'll tell you in a minute how big of a deal he is, um, and how incredible it is that we have him here as a resource for you today. Um, but also, this is our Facebook Live anniversary. So if you're out there and you've been watching us now for a year, I want you to comment below and tell us, hey, I saw your first Facebook Live and now I'm watching uh, at least the 12th Facebook Live. I feel like we've done more than that. Uh, but uh, no, this has been something that, that um, we've thoroughly enjoyed. We hope you've enjoyed it as well and that you found this to be uh, meaningful to you, helpful uh, when it comes to hopefully dispelling some of those myths about the college admissions process, about financial aid today, and, and then really how to get involved. We've had a lot of really good um, campus partners and, and people like the Honors College or Parent and Family Programs on here um, to tell you about the special things that we do here at Kennesaw State to take care of you, the student, or to take care of your student if you're a, a parent watching uh, this with us tonight. So um, as, as tradition, I have some news from the nest, so I want to go over some of these items and then we're going to jump in with Mr. Day here and we're going to talk all about financial aid and scholarships and anything that you want to know and hopefully um, you'll be able to walk away tonight or, or shift from the couch to uh, wherever you go after the couch, uh, after surfing Facebook, uh, and you feel at ease with the financial aid process and you feel at ease with, uh, with coming to Kennesaw State. So, a little bit of news from the nest. I always like to start with football because I love football so much and it's that time of year, right? So you, so you gotta talk about it. Um, we destroyed Alabama State this past weekend, so that was super exciting. One, we share the same colors, so we showed them who wears the colors better. Um, and uh, two, we showed them that the state of Georgia is better than Alabama. No offense, Ron, Ron and I both lived in Alabama, um, amongst other things. So anyways, all of that aside, um, we destroyed Alabama State, and we have Missouri State coming up this week. So make sure you're like me, I have ESPN Plus, I can watch the game from anywhere. Plug for ESPN Plus, it's $4.99 a month. Um, so spend your money wisely. Uh, that's just like one less Starbucks for me. But I get to watch uh, the Owls play uh, any weekend, which is awesome. So Missouri State coming up. We're two and one right now. Um, we're ranked in the top 10 in the FCS. Um, and we almost beat our first F FBS team in Kent State. Really, I was, I was very sad. We were at open house. Our president was at the game. And uh, uh, myself and some of my staff and our tour guides were all watching the game on our phones at the end of open house, sitting having lunch, um, and uh, we really thought we were gonna take them. Unfortunately, alas, we did not. So, uh, here we are today, we're two and one. Great record though, because against all the FCS teams, we're destroying them. Um, so watch out, watch for KSU football, as well as lots of other things. Our volleyball team right now is doing a really good job. People show up for the volleyball games. We're excited for basketball season coming up. Uh, both men's and women's gonna be spectacular. Uh, so yeah, really cool stuff. Okay, another thing, open house. So if you didn't come to our Marietta campus open house, you really missed out. It was a great time um, to really, open house is really so that you can come, tour campus, talk to faculty members, talk to somebody from financial aid, talk about financial aid and scholarships, um, get to eat in either the commons or stingers, get to tour housing. It's your day to do everything all at the same time. So I really encourage you to come to an open house. We have three more coming up. One more on the Marietta campus, which we're on our beautiful Marietta campus tonight. We always do Facebook Live from the Marietta campus. Uh, and then we have two uh, on the Kennesaw campus. Matter of fact, the next one is this Saturday on the Kennesaw campus. So September the 21st starts at 10 a.m. is when the opening session starts, goes all the way until 
your heart's desire because we have a whole thing at the end where you get to choose your own adventure, just like the old comic books or uh, graphic novels. I don't know what we called them back in, back in the day, but where you could pick which way the, the, the superhero would go. Uh, that's what you get to do when you come to open house. So uh, open house coming up. We've got one uh, again this Saturday. Um, we have another open house on October the 12th that will be on our Marietta campus. And then our final one for the fall is on November the 16th, and that'll be um, back on the Kennesaw campus. So easy to sign up for open house. Um, you go to admissions.kennesaw.edu slash open house, and you can sign up there. You can also go to our visit website, visit.kennesaw.edu, and sign up there. Again, visit.kennesaw.edu. We have a lot of other things going on too, so if you can't make it for an open house, which those are always on Saturdays, um, we have campus tours Monday through Friday, uh, three times a day on the Kennesaw campus, two times a day on the Marietta campus. So come for one of our, our campus tours. You sign up at the visit website as well. We have special Spanish info sessions um, and tours. We have uh, transfer information sessions and tours. We have spotlight tours for very particular majors and they take you more in depth um, within their, their major so you get to see really cool things like laboratories, classroom space, talk to faculty members. Um, so a lot of different things to do and, and also we have a day with honors. Um, so if you want to spend part of your day with me, we do those on Fridays. Um, and my gosh, I know Ron's probably like, how much, uh, how much other stuff is this guy going to share? We have, um, <laughs> on top of that, we have some dual enrollment nights coming up. So. We, we uh, do a lot of events here in the fall, and that's the time to do it, right? For, for a lot of families, you're thinking about next fall, you're thinking if you're a senior in high school, or you have a senior in high school, or you have a junior in high school, and you're thinking about one of these future fall terms or traditional time to start college, um, then a lot of events go on here in the fall. So watch out for those. Um, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't point out within the news, uh, uh, news in the nest, that we have our priority application deadline coming up. We are a month and a half away. November the 1st is our priority deadline. It's a really important deadline because you're telling us um, that you really want to come to Kennesaw State if you're applying by that deadline um, and you want your decision as quickly as possible. And it's really for you should be a relief because you want to apply to us, get that decision, and then you're ready to go for the fall. Um, if you're picking us against some other institutions and you're still thinking about where you want to attend college, um, we want to help get you off the fence. Um, so apply, get admitted, and then we're going to help you throughout the rest of your senior year find out why you should choose Kennesaw State University. Um, so apply by November the 1st. After that, orientation will open up, housing will open up. Um, housing is going to open up on December 2nd this year, so very excited. Um, this past year we had wait lists on both of our campuses. Housing was very, very popular. And you want to make sure that you've been admitted to the university so that you can go ahead and, and fill out your housing application. All right, um, I think we have a question and then we're going to jump in and, and find out a little bit more information from Ron. I'm going to pick his brain and uh, see how far he'll let me take him. <laughs> okay, our first question comes from Tay. They want to know which campus is for health science majors. So health science majors, you'll be on the Kennesaw campus. Super easy. Thanks, Tay. <laughs> that was a good start. Good start. I got it. <laughs> okay, so our next question oh, is oh, cool. about financial aid. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, Renee says her daughter is a high school senior, and they're interested in KSU. They're looking for monies and that they don't have to pay back. How do we find, where do we start, basically? That is awesome. Good question. It's a good question. I, I plan to get into it, but I'll go ahead and start it now. The best thing to do is to go ahead and fill out the FAFSA. Um, for students coming in in the fall of, of 20, they'll start the FAFSA October the 1st of 19. In other words, a couple of weeks from now. And you'll use the 2018 tax data. And go ahead and get that filled out very quickly. Um, but don't um, just rely totally on federal. You may want to go ahead and pursue some of the, the private sector out there, uh, scholarships that are out there, such as your churches, your civic organizations, your um, your parents, employers, or in those type things, and see if there's anything out there. Uh, we're trying our best to revamp some of our scholarships at Kennesaw, also to assist with, with merit-based awards and those type things. But the first thing I advised anyone to do is to do the FAFSA, and that, again, starts October 1st. Okay, and um, we are going to share all that link information as well. Right. I'll put that in there for you. Nice. Okay, so our next question comes from Amber. They want to know, or she wants to know, how much does HOPE cover? 
How does hope work? Hope will cover, now hope, there's a misnomer out there that hope covers everything. It does not, it never has. It pays by the hour. The current rate, and it does change from year to year at times, uh, our current rate is 167 per hour at Kennesaw. And it does, it leaves about, about $13 or so that doesn't cover, that you have to pay out of pocket per hour. You can take one hour and get hope, or you can take 15 hours and get hope. So it's not based on full time or part time, it's just based on the hourly rate. Awesome, they're coming in pretty quick. Got nice, a lot of questions. wow. We okay. didn't even get, let Ron introduce himself. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. <laughs> That's what happens when you toss out, this is gonna be about financial aid and scholarships. <laughs> okay, okay, so um, Desiree wants to know, are there scholarships available for students who are already attending KSU? Yes, we have a scholarship th uh, office, and actually that has become part of the financial aid office just this year. The scholarship application is an application for all of the scholarships at Kennesaw. You fill out one application and then you're matched up with the parameters of the scholarships. And that opens in November. November the 1st is when it opens and it will close February the 1st of this year so we can get the notices out. We're hoping by the 1st of March to help students to, as far as preparing for their payments and preparing for that May, that May 1st mm -hmm. deadline that you guys have for admissions. So um, that's the way it works. That's awesome. And that's new this year, the, the earlier notification and it earlier is. deadline. So everybody pay attention to what Mr. Day said and please start the scholarship application November the 1st. Don't delay. There's no reason to sure. delay. Um, and then uh, you're going to find out earlier than ever before. So that'll be a really nice treat for our current students like, the, like you. Best thing to do is to go to the financial aid website. It is very easy. It's just financial aid, one word, dot Kennesaw, dot edu. And you, there's a link to the scholarship process there. So you can fill it out from that site. Awesome. I will share that in the comments. Okay, our next question comes from Santiago. He wants to know if the priority deadline is binding. So the priority deadline is not binding. Um, there's just a teachable moment out there. There's really three types of deadlines um, that an admissions office will, will throw out there. Um, you have an early decision, which is a binding, it's the only one that is binding uh, in terms of if you're admitted to a university under an early decision deadline. Um, those are institutions that are highly, highly selective like the Harvards and the Yales and the Dukes and those types of institutions will have those types of uh, application deadlines. Um, the next is early admission or priority. It's the same thing, early admission or priority. It's the same type of deadline. Those are non-binding, but it really tells the university and, and, and it tells you that you're going to find out earlier um, than anybody else. So those are, those are good deadlines, not binding, um, and helps you make a decision, a wise decision as you go throughout your, your senior year or if you're a transfer student. Then the other, the, the last, the third type is a regular decision or sometimes you'll hear it called a final decision. And that's the absolute last deadline, period. Nothing past it. You have to meet it. Um, there you go, brick wall after that. So you wanna make sure you apply by a regular decision. So for instance, for us, um, for the fall, you've got all the way until uh, June the 1st is, a, is our final deadline or regular decision deadline. All right, next question comes from Nicole. She wants to know what is the amount or the award amount for the black and gold scholarship and can it be stacked with Zell Miller? The best thing to do is to go to the website. Again, I said the financialaid.kennesaw.edu and go to the scholarship link because there's a lot of things involved with the black and gold that you need to actually read eligibility criteria and things as that. So I really don't want to basically talk about the amounts. Um, we do have scholarships that do indeed stack. Um, we, uh, we try our best to keep scholarships, as do most schools, that cover just the tuition itself. So uh, we will indeed stack some scholarships. Others will stack like you know, private scholarships and and some of the scholarships Kennesaw offers. Okay. All right, next comes from Tay from earlier. She came hey. back. <laughs> uh, can I get any information, how, or how, sh how should she collect information on a, obtaining a volleyball scholarship? So an athletic scholarship, uh -huh. can you separate that? Maybe just talk a little bit about 
that process if you, you have control any of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't. Yeah, Athlet, no, I don't. <laughs> athletics is something that is is something that we handle that runs through the office as far as the actual posting of the awards. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in a specific scholarship, you need to contact the coach of that scholarship or the athletic department at Kennesaw, and they'll be glad to direct you because you have to worry about the NCAA rules. There are certain times when you can't talk to the coach and, and so on. So the best thing to do is to contact the athletic department, start there, and they can channel you to the right area. And it's easy to get there if you go to our website, just kennesaw.edu. There's an athletic tab towards right. the top on the right. Click on that and it'll take you to ksuowls.com, which is our athletic website. Right. Um, and, and exactly what Ron said, that's right there on the website. Okay, so a uh, question from Jessica. She was told that only 5% of students who applied for the black and gold scholarship were accepted. Is that correct? And why isn't there more foundational and merit-based scholarships at KSU? That's an exceptional question. We are trying our best to build up the scholarship base. Um, a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that what you basically do is you, you have donors that give the monies and then we, we take the proceeds off of the actual scholarship monies that they give to award in scholarships. So they don't give like $1,000 every year and you award $1,000. So the scholarships are limited in the amount of restricted accounts that we have and the proceeds that come off of those accounts. I'm not exactly sure of the percentage of students who receive the black and gold. Um, I do know that it's not all that apply. Uh, we have a, a large number that apply for those. Uh, but the, again, the best thing I can't reiterate enough is to go to the website and look at the information and certainly apply. Don't feel as though you shouldn't apply. You should always apply and, and, and just follow the process and we'll see what we can do to assist you. Okay. All right, our next question comes from Amber. Um, they are a dual enrollment student in high school. Should they apply as a transfer and be a junior when they come in? They're in the Herzing program? Mm -hmm. Yes. Jordan, I guess that's a question for you. There's nothing else. That's it. Right. Do we need more if, info? If you're a dual enrollment okay. student, you okay. get to graduate from high school, which is what that means. You're, you're uh, still in high school, so you're dual enrolling, taking college credit that both counts for high school graduation as well as for a future college degree. Uh, you should apply as a first-year student. So when you go to our application, you can select. It really doesn't matter if you pick freshman or transfer freshman, um, but because you've yet to graduate from high school, that's how we're going to view you as a, as a new freshman here at the institution. Um, and even though you have credit hours that you've already earned, we're gonna evaluate uh, when we receive those transcripts. So for you, um, it's important to note that if you've been dual enrolled and you, you've already earned college credit, and you have actual grades from those classes, we need to see your college transcript. And if you've been to multiple colleges, some, some dual enrollment students will enroll at, at say a, a technical college as a freshman or a sophomore in high school, and then they'll enroll at their local community college or maybe even here at a place like um, KSU at a four-year institution. We need to see the college transcript from each place you've attended if you've earned credit from those institutions and those grades have posted. Um, then we also need your high school transcript. That's very important. It's, it's uh, the most important thing to go along with your application would be the high school transcript. So we need to see all of that to be able to fully evaluate you. But ultimately, you, you, it doesn't matter what you pick. We're going to, on our end in the admissions office, determine the type of student that you are once we start to get your transcripts. So don't, don't fret too much about it. Okay, next question comes from Adisu. He wants to know why students have to pay for an athletic fee. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know that I can I mean, we're, we're, get, we're getting some great <laughs> questions tonight. And they're not stopping. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I really wanted to hear Ron's story, but I'll just hear it later. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> there are fees that you do indeed pay at every university or college that you attend that do indeed allow you to participate in certain facilities such as the athletic facilities our facilities at Kennesaw State are just exceptional and to participate in all of the the, the facilities that we have and um, such as the we I, what is Rexner? That's a different one. And, and then all of the, the Siegel centers and all of yeah. those things that we have. It really allows the student to, um, to, to have a holistic approach, not just a classroom environment, 
it, it also is athletics, it's activities, it's health fees, it's mm -hmm. all of those fees. Every university has those. Right. And, and I do want to say this, I, I, I actually like to talk about student fees because you as a student get to vote on those. You get to have a voice um, and uh, your, your peers uh, at some point along the way elected to um, have things like our football team, that, that was a voted on thing um, back in the day, as official as that sounds, but, but when, uh, when the institution put out to the student body is this something that you're interested in? Um, and uh, I'm glad that they did, because uh, we absolutely love football and, and we do a really good job at it. For instance, it was put before the student body for a vote. Um, and so those are things that you as a student get to have a voice into. And I would tell you if, um, if you disagree with the athletic fee, you should go to uh, your student affairs meetings and student government meetings and, and get involved as a student and make your voice be known because that is your right. Um, but uh, it's, a, and, and thankfully we, we are a university that values open discourse and you'll be given that opportunity uh, to talk about the fees that you like and you don't like. Uh, but just as Ron said, those fees go to, to allow you uh, the ability to participate in so many different things, um, like technology fee, which is always something where, where I get a lot of questions about what is a technology fee? And it's to support um, Wi-Fi access across the campus and um, computer laboratories and access to, to the things that you need so that you can be successful in your studies, which ultimately that's what it's most important is how, how do we, we support you as a student while you're here. Um, so yes, they, they do have a purpose. I know it sometimes may not feel like that um, because you look, up, look across uh, the, the student fee board. I do say one thing that I value about the way that, that um, we put out our student fees is that you can see what, what that money uh, is going towards. And that's a, that's a nice thing. Some institutions just lop it into the tuition and you really don't know what you're paying into. Um, but here, here we're very transparent. Okay. All right, next question comes from Kate. Um, she has more, or if she has more than 30 hours of transferable credit but graduates high school in May, does she apply as a freshman or a transfer? You should still apply as a freshman. Um, you can, it, it'll actually say transfer freshman is, is one option you can pick. Um, and that's really for, our, uh, we find more often than not, dual enrollment students uh, mm -hmm. that have earned college credit. But uh, again, just like I, I said before, it really doesn't matter just as long as you put your application in. That's what matters the most. Um, so you can pick transfer if you like, and we're going to figure it out on our end. Uh, but, but for me, the rule of thumb is if you haven't graduated high school yet, you're an incoming freshman, no matter how many credit hours you have you're still an incoming freshman. We'll figure it out on our end that you have college credit and then we'll apply that to your, your student account. Okay, next is Yvette. Um, are there any scholarships for housing or meal plans? We have, and, and that's a tough question because we try our best to, let me back up. You're charged things like tuition fees, meal plans, housing, those kind of things is through your student account. So everything that we have as far as financial aid goes, goes to pay toward those costs. So we don't single out certain scholarships or certain grants or loans or whatever for a specific thing. Hope pays for tuition first, but the others such as your grants and scholarships goes toward your cost. So it does, but it's not really singled out specifically for housing or mills. Is there, um, we have a follow-up from earlier, Jessica wants to know, um, is the scholarship email, is the only email to contact scholarship apps at kennesaw.edu? No, it's not. You can actually contact the financial aid office now. You can go a variety of ways. You can go again to the financialaid.kennesaw.edu and there's a contact over on the left-hand side where you can contact any of the counselors and they'll be glad to assist you. You can also contact finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D, at kennesaw.edu and just email there and we'll be glad to assist you. The scholarship, again, information now is moved over into the financial aid office. So you don't contact the scholarship office anymore because it is now part of the financial aid office. And I listed that link for you in the comments. 
Hey, Becca, can we yeah. pause on questions? We can. Uh, let's, not stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we're, you keep your questions coming, and we're going to get to them. And if we don't answer some of them live, we're going to go back and answer them in the comments section. So always keep that in mind as well. Um, but Ron, I want to know because I don't want to. I don't want to let it go. Um, but what are really some resources that we have available that you really want parents that are out there, students that are out there, to know about? Um, that can hopefully, when they're, when they're out on their own, they're doing things on their own time, right. they can engage in that are going to help them in the financial aid and the scholarship process. Thanks, George. We have, I would really think we have one of the better resources when it comes to our website, first and foremost. And I've said that website address quite often. But inside of that website, we have a variety of things such as videos. We have a, a library of around 200, 250 videos. For example, you ask a question, what is the difference between a sub-loan and an unsub-loan? What is a Pell Grant? What is the Hope Scholarship? There's a video there that actually can walk you through that process. It actually has a video that can walk you through completing the FAFSA by step by step. So we have the website, we have the videos, we have a chat bot that is available to students 24-7, so you certainly can ask questions there, just very basic questions. We have ways where students, for example, our student population is, is all over the campus, so when they want to come into the office and schedule an appointment, they can actually schedule it from their dorm room or their, their classroom, and when they come over to the office, we'll ping them and say, now come over in 15 minutes, we'll be glad to talk to you. So those things are available as well, but we, I really want to emphasize the website, um, but I also want to emphasize our counselor base. We have exceptional staff who are dedicated and be glad to assist you with anything and everything. That's awesome. What are some, some tips you want to leave people with that, that you've either um, gained over the years and, and some <laughs> things that from your, from your um, uh, rich history of working in financial aid that you want to share? Um, or, or maybe it's even just some, you're, you're debunking some financial aid right. myths, or hopefully, right. I like to view that not really as debunking myths, but taking some stress off of people. What, what would be some things you would share? The, the first, I really want to emphasize this, is that most people select themselves out of the financial aid process because they say, my parents make too much money. Um, I always say, don't ever think that. If you're a taxpayer, you're eligible for federal aid. So first and foremost, fill out the FAFSA, and let's just see what we can do to assist you there. But the first thing you need to do is monitor the deadlines of the schools, because our deadline, for example, we require the FAFSA be completed by March 1st, and if students don't complete it by that time, sometimes we don't have the aid available to them when they come in to make payment on their account. So deadlines are important. Take away the complexities, because research as much as you can, like our websites, uh, go through the video libraries as much as you can and become versed in the process because once you do it one time, it's not the most difficult thing to walk through. But if you have difficulties, that's where the seasoned staff, such as the staff we have on the campus, will be glad to walk you through step by step with the process. But don't procrastinate, monitor the deadlines, fill out the applications, fill them out correctly, and fill them out in a very timely fashion. Those are the things I always tell people. You, why do you think this is going to be a uh, you know, more existential question, but why do you think some students, and, and maybe families in this case too, because of, because of that, the nature of that relationship, wait, wait to fill out the FAFSA, and, and especially because uh, when we're so public with things like the March 1st deadline, what do you, what do you think the hang up is? I think the, most people think it's complex, and it's tend to, you put it aside because of the complexity. It's really not. It, it, the, the application, the FAFSA, I will say, is a complex form the first time you do it. They say it's written on the fifth grade level. I've never <laughs> met that fifth grade. But, right, right. But right. It, once you complete it one time, and you, because, for instance, you can download the IRS data, which is your income data, directly into the FAFSA without having to enter the data. So I think it's, people think it's so complex and convoluted, and secondly, that they're not going to be eligible. Mm -hmm. So they, they say, well, I'll just put it aside, and then when time comes, when they don't have the resources to mm -hmm. pay, then that's when they start late. And, but unfortunately, we have federal dollars and we have institutional dollars that are limited. And when those monies run out, then oftentimes we don't have you know, mm -hmm. monies to give to students that indeed would have qualified had they applied earlier. 
Now's the time to tell me if I'm wrong, but this is what I've been saying for years, okay? <laughs> I've been saying, even if you're Michael Jordan's kids, you, you should can. fill out the FAFSA. Most certainly can. Um, and I got to a point where that may not not uh, connect as well as I it used sell, to. I always sell Bill Gates' kids. There so. you go, that works. Everybody knows who Bill <laughs> Gates is. Yeah, I was going to say, because we're in, a, in Metro Atlanta, right. I, I like to now say, even if you're Usher's kids, you fill out the FAFSA. You know who it's Usher exactly is? Like, oh, yes. Okay, sure you do. No, I love it. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so yeah, okay, good. Well, I'm glad I'm okay in saying that because say I because I, I, I do enjoy saying it. Um, you need to do it at least one time. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're going to get hope, you need to fill out the FAFSA or the GSF app anyway, one or the other. So go ahead and fill out the FAFSA, and and that way you can determine if you're going to receive federal mm -hmm. monies. And mm -hmm. maybe next year you don't want to do the FAFSA, but at least see if you can indeed qualify. But I really don't know why you wouldn't. No, it's, it's nor do I. Nor 15, do I. 20 minutes of your time, if that. I mean, I, it was a game changer when they did the IRS tool exactly. and, and how it connects. I mean, because even so, I have a college age daughter. Right. And it's, I, I mean, it takes me all of maybe 10 minutes. Right. It, it, it's really not, not anything to fret about. That's now the second time I've said that tonight, so apparently that's my <laughs> phrase. <laughs> okay, let's jump back into some of these hard hitting questions. I want to make sure we got some of those things in. Okay. Just in case people don't ask about, you know, Ron's advice on tips and whatnot. <laughs> so. Okay, so Kathy wants to know what the difference between Zell Miller and Hope is. Zell Miller is attached to the cost of tuition, the direct cost for the tuition per hour at Kennesaw State. So it pays all of the tuition. Hope pays about 90% of the tuition. It does not pay the full tuition. So that's the difference between the two. Also, Zelle requires a higher GPA coming out of high school than the HOPE does. You have to have a 3.7 coming out of high school, whereas a 3.0 for the HOPE. You have to also have a 26 or a 1200, 26 ACT or 1200 SAT to get the, the Zelle Miller. And the HOPE, you don't have to have either of those tests. Okay. Next question comes from Christian. They want to know when the FAFSA is filled out, how long will it take to know the award amount and will they know before they get a decision for the priority application? So I guess let's talk about the sequence of applying and, and filing the FAFSA. What comes first? Does mm -hmm. it matter? Mm -hmm. Let's clarify that's good, that. That's a good question. As I've said numerous times, and I'm going to say it one more time, October the 1st, go ahead and fill the FAFSA out. You don't have to be accepted or admitted to KSU to fill the FAFSA out. Go ahead and, and fill it out even if you haven't completed the admission mm -hmm. process. Once the admission process is completed, then we'll start the process of determining your eligibility. We typically do not award students who are not admitted to the university. We try our best to go ahead and award those first. But go ahead and get the FAFSA in your back pocket, get it completed, and then go through the admission process, and then everything flows. It typically, once you fill the FAFSA out, um, we will start awarding students probably in November, about the middle of November. Um, so again, we wait if you're admitted that we'll send you an award notice out. How would a, how would a student check on their, their award or their financial aid package? You can go, we have a student portal um, and it's where our mascot is an owl. And so we call it OWL Express, O-W-L Express. And you go on that site and there is a variety of things on that site. There's, you can pay your bills there, you can check your grades there, um, you can check your financial aid there. There's all type things there. So that would be the site where you receive it. We'll also notify you via your, your KSU email account, um, you know, your information as well. So. so that's a good tip that Ron just gave you is, one, you need to set up your KSU email That's account. Exactly right. So after you've been admitted to the university, you can actually go and set up your KSU email, and then you're gonna get official university notification through that old thing called email. Uh, so <laughs> it's where, you know, we're not yet where uh, we're beaming messages to your eyeballs, um, but soon enough, uh, you'll be able to see it like oh, Google right. Glasses, uh, something like that, but no, uh, yeah, you got actually check email. I mean, I remember when I was going to college, <laughs> And email was a new thing, right. um, and we thought this is some magical way to send letters to each other, uh, but it's much more than that, right? So you actually have to look at it, and this is, that's my uh, College 101 piece of advice, because for the rest of your life, you're going to be checking email. That's right. um, I mean, even if you're just looking for sales, you know, flyers and whatnot for 
I don't know, I keep getting stuff from Restoration Hardware, so I just unsubscribed from that. <laughs> One, can't afford that furniture. Uh, but two, they send a ton of emails. So anyways, Absolutely. if you're looking for that kind of stuff, that's what email's for. Um, but it's also for official communication, like, hey, your financial aid package is ready, go check it out. And we're also uh, starting the process of texting students. Um, so if you opt into that process, we'll be glad to even text you notifications as well. Nice. So. You should, you should opt in. We certainly should. For sure. Awesome, okay, next comes from Renee. How are the SAT and ACT scores factored into admission and scholarships, uh, sc awarding scholarships? Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll start with admissions okay. if, you, right. if you want to handle the scholarship part. Um, so we do use the SAT and the ACT, the official national SAT and national ACT, in admissions decisions. And it is one of the three big requirements. So to apply to the university and receive an admissions decision, if you're an incoming freshman or first year student, you need to apply, number one. Um, I like to call, this is, sorry, you can laugh at this if you, if you think it's funny. So I like to think of the application as a shopping cart, all right? So you go to the grocery store and you need to get, or maybe you call it a buggy or whatever, you know, people call it all sorts of things, but you're going to the grocery store and Ron, you're gonna get your, your pack of soda or as we call it here, Coke, no matter the color or flavor, it's Coke. Um, you're going to get your uh, bag of apples you're going to get your milk, I don't know, you know, anything, right? Cereal, yeah, you're a cereal man. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, so you're gonna get all these things, you need a shopping cart. That's an application to the university. So when you're applying to the university, you gotta have a shopping cart so that you can put stuff in it, like your test scores, SAT, ACT, gotta go in the shopping cart, your transcripts, high school transcript, college transcript for dual enrollment, put it in the shopping cart. But you need the shopping cart first, right? You don't go to the grocery store and start picking up your apple. Maybe you do. I do that sometimes and then you realize, uh-oh, I gotta get way more stuff than my arms will carry. Um, so there you go. So anyways, you need a shopping cart. That's my analogy. Um, and that is your application. Apply to the university, submit your transcripts, uh, your, your high school transcript, college transcripts, and then we need your SAT and or ACT scores. They are a part of the decision process. We don't just ask them for, for no reason. Uh, but one thing I love that we did this past year is we saw the total score on the SAT or the composite score on the ACT as a barrier for some students, and it really wasn't necessary. Um, there's, there's a lot of research out there. You can go read it if you, if you want to really get in the nitty gritty of, of uh, standardized testing, but there's a lot of research out there that doesn't say that it, it really means a hill of beans on how well you're going to do in college. It, it's not a good predictor of success. Um, there's a lot of other things that are good predictors of, of a student's ability to be successful in college. And um, so we decided to remove one of those barriers. That's one thing I love about this institution and, and where we are here in Metro Atlanta, serving so many different students, so many different types of backgrounds of our students. Uh, and we saw that as a barrier, so we got rid of it. And uh, now we're just looking on the SAT, we will look at the math score and the evidence-based reading and writing. So it's the traditional three-digit scores the math, and then what I would call English, like when I took the SAT, now it's called evidence-based reading and writing. So we're looking at those, you need a 500 on the evidence-based reading and writing, and you need a 490 on the math to be admissible, along with your high school GPA needs to be at least a 2.5 academic GPA. When you take the ACT, we're looking at the math score, and at least an 18 in the math, um, if you take, uh, well, which you'll take all of this, sorry, 18 in the math, and then on the English, you need an 18, but we'll also look at the reading in lieu of the English score, and you need an 18 in that. So it's easy to remember with the ACT, 18's across the board, and you're in good shape with KSU for incoming freshman students. Um, that is all on our website. I know it's a lot of numbers that I threw out, but, but those are meaningful things when it comes to being admitted to the university and it is a part of the overall look of a student. Scholarships. For, as far as scholarships go, we do not typically look at the scores uh, to determine your eligibility for scholarships. Now there is one, again, the Zell Miller, you have to have a certain ACT or SAT score to, be, coming, to be, be eligible coming out of high school. You can only receive Zell coming directly out of high school. So that is the only one that I can think off the top of my head that just indeed does require a test score. Uh, typically it's more the GPAs right, and, and right. the need as far as the FAFSA determines eligibility for scholarships. 
I will say, if you allow me, this. Um, if you're interested in the Honors College, Honors College now has true. some scholarships. Now that's true. That's um, but their scholarships are really not based on, it's kind of a halfway thing. So, right. Ron, Ron, so Ron's like, you know, right. Jordan. Uh, but no, um, <laughs> the, you have to be accepted to the Honors College. Right. And they have some minimum standards uh, that they're looking for in a student, like a 25 on the ACT or a 1220 on the SAT. And those minimum standards, um, if you're admitted to the honor, or th those are the minimums so that you can even be considered for the Honors College. Uh, after that, their scholarships are not based on SAT That's or right. ACT. So they're much more interested in the holistic student. Their application is holistic. Um, uh, so um, take a look at the Honors College. It's, it's honors.kennesaw.edu, and they have some scholarships within their cohorted programs like PEGS, Presidents, Emerging Global Scholars, or the Great Books Program, as well as they have some general Honors College scholarships as well. Okay. All right, next comes from, sorry guys, I lost my place. Okay, Marsha wants to know why or when would a financial aid award be reduced from what was originally offered? There are numbers of, number of things that can indeed happen. Um, First of all, things like Pell Grant, Hope Scholarship, Zell Miller are based on hours enrolled. If a student registers for classes and then their drop dead drops some of the classes and goes down to, let's say, from 12 hours to nine hours, the amount drops. Uh, so it is indeed based on that. Also, as we're contacted from the federal government at times, uh, students are being told by the federal government that you've borrowed too much money mm -hmm. and then um, we're being told after the fact. So things can vary. A financial aid is one of those moving <coughs> targets at times and that's unfortunate but it can indeed vary from time to time. But we try our best to communicate that as, as effectively as possible on what indeed does, in, does happen. We try to communicate upfront uh, to say there's a possibility of your scholarship being reduced or your Pell being reduced or your HOPE being reduced. Um, we notify you as much as we have all that information again on our website. Uh, but it indeed can happen, and that is unfortunate, but it does, can, does happen often. Okay, this is kind of a long one, but I think it's generic enough that it may apply to several other people, so okay. I'm going to read it. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just a heads up, I like okay? that ex explanation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who asked this question? Jerry. 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 With a so, J or a G? With a J. All right. What's He's up, asking Jerry? for his daughter. So he says, his daughter attends KSU and had to take out loans to pay for funding. Or pay for funding. She received the hope, but nothing else. Found out that we had to appeal the FAFSA, and the appeal was approved. So now that that has happened, will she receive funds from the Pell Grant now that the financial situation has changed to help pay back any loans that she had to take out? Do we need any clarification? That to me sounds like an SAT question. That has that, mileage and timing involved. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand appeal the FAFSA. So how about I ask for a private message and we'll get right. more details. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So moving on to the next one. Student is currently dual enrolled and was told not to officially apply until March due to funding. Housing application slash deposits start in January and dorm space is limited and you have to be admitted to put down a deposit. Can you clarify if there is a deposit? How, how does that work? I love this question. Thank you for asking this question because I think just like financial aid, there's some myths that are out there. Right. Um, you as a dual enrollment student here at the university, at KSU, you are a regular student. You can go ahead and actually apply for housing when housing opens and it opens you know, December 2nd is what housing has told us, which is awesome, thanks housing. Um, and uh, I got to say, sorry, I got to do a shout out. Chris Bruno, my buddy in housing, did an incredible job today and I, I owe him an email. Um, but he jumped in. I had a family that showed up in between tours today, wanted to see uh, one of our showrooms and he was there in, he said three minutes, he was there in a minute to take them to the showroom. It was lickety split fast, he was there. Um, and uh, they had a great time, so thanks Chris. But anyways. Um, Housing will open up December 2nd uh, and you can apply. 
um, you're, the, the way that you are right now, and I realize how it's, it's confusing for dual enrollment students and families, is you are a KSU student, even though you haven't graduated high school yet, and you have full access to do things here at the university like an admitted student would do. So you can sign up for housing, you can sign up for orientation, you can fill out the scholarship application. There's nothing that's holding you back. Um, what has to happen in the springtime, and we're actually working on a new process right now, very, I had a meeting this morning about it, uh, is we're working on a, a way for our returning students, students that want to become degree-seeking students and stay at Kennesaw State. And we will want you to stay at Kennesaw State. That's one big reason why we've opened up our doors to you as a dual enrollment student is to show you how good things are here at the university and we hope that you just want to stay. Um, so uh, in the springtime, traditionally, students have reapplied to the university. And that's happened usually as early as mid-February, sometimes it's the very beginning of March. Um, but there's no hindrances to you. So you can think about yourself as never being here at the university, you've applied um, during your senior year of high school, and you've been admitted, and now you're gonna do all these other things. So for instance, with housing, you'll pay the housing deposit, that's your housing application, and uh, you can do that when they open. Um, it's a little different for us. I know I'm, I'm really long-winded on this, this question, uh, but I want to make sure it, it gets out there. Um, it's a little different for us than if you were to be enrolled at a two-year institution because we're, we're a big four-year institution that a lot of students attend, and um, we have a, a large number of dual enrollment students. We have almost 900 dual enrollment students currently enrolled at the university. So um, a lot of them want to stay and want to continue at Kennesaw State. It's a little different because you don't, you don't find that as often at the two-year institution. So the way that the state of Georgia works and, and um, student funding through Georgia Student Finance, you can't be a dual enrollment student and at the same time be an admitted freshman. That Those things with funding don't work out. So we have to keep you in these separate uh, baskets. We can use the shopping cart analogy again. Keep you in these separate baskets um, until the right time, until all your funding's hit for the dual enrollment basket. Once that's done, then we switch you over to the degree-seeking basket um, and you can move forward. But ultimately, to answer your question now very directly, it doesn't hurt you whatsoever. You get to operate just like a, a, a regular incoming freshman would. Apply for housing, apply for, for um, scholarships, apply for uh, orientation or sign up for orientation. It's, it's all the same. And you still get to register early, which is great. Okay. Next, um, what options do international students have apart from tuition waivers? I guess for scholarships and aid. Scholarships, yeah. yeah. That is a wonderful question. And let me kind of get a, a little bit of background to that. International students are, are those students who are not U.S. citizens. I think the question is stating. Um, most of our scholarships for, are based on citizenship, whether it's in Georgia or the United States. So therefore, they're limited in the number of scholarships we have available for internationals. It does not hurt for you to apply for them, though. Some of the scholarships do indeed require to have a need component. So even though you're an international student and you cannot get federal aid because only United States citizens can receive federal aid, you still can fill out the FAFSA. That way you can go ahead and be eligible for some of those other scholarships that require a need component such as the waivers, and so uh, we always invite International to go ahead and apply for the FAFSA as well. Awesome, okay, here's a quick one. Um, as a KSU alum, if you come back for graduate school, do you still have to pay for meal plans? How does that work? Do you have to pay for meal plan if you're a graduate student? No. I, don't I don't think, think a graduate you do. student no. is required to have a no, meal plan. I don't think you yeah. do. Although, why wouldn't you want one? I mean, have you had <laughs> food on camera? I'm just kidding. You need to go to the commons. It's not a... Yum. It's not like a... Okay. I'll Monique. split. I'll go <laughs> halfsies on the meal plan with you. And, uh, yeah. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you know what they say. Thanks. Okay. Let me know. Okay. Monique wants to know if there are any scholarships for graduate students in the business school. So let's talk about the application. Again, the application, and let me just say this once more, when you fill out the application, you're filling out one form and it matches you to other forms of scholarships. So you're not particularly applying for a particular scholarship. 
you're applying for scholarships in general. And if you meet the parameters for those scholarships, then you'll be matched up to those scholarships. So I, I don't say that there are singled out. There are scholarships for business majors, mm -hmm. but there are, uh, go ahead and fill out the scholarship application and just see if you can indeed qualify for the, the scholarships, whether it be undergrad or grad. I'm at our last question for now. What? We have about 10 minutes left, and this is, this is where we're sitting with this one question, so then we can maybe go in a little bit more. Okay, with a 30% increase in student enrollment, yay, yeah. <laughs> are there any plans to create more on-campus housing um, at Marietta? On the, specifically on the Marietta campus, yeah. Um, so I'm going to think about what I'm allowed to say, okay? So um, we recognize, let me say first and foremost, uh, that we have, as I like to say, have been on a rocket ship of growth uh, here at the university. And that's really been the whole life of the institution. You know, we turned 56 as an institution in October. And the growth is exciting. Yes, really yeah, 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 very exciting. Um, and I grew up in the area. I'm mm -hmm. from Marietta, um, and I remember this institution when we only had one campus, mm -hmm. when we didn't have all the really cool programs that are on the Marietta campus. Um, and when we had around 12,000 students. Um, so to see the growth, even from when I was in high school in the mid 90s to today is, it's, to me it's something that I'm very proud of. I'm proud to be a part of Kennesaw State. Um, I know Ron and I were talking about that actually before we even got going. Um, just to, uh, to be this institution at this time, serving Metro Atlanta, the state of Georgia, we really feel like we serve the whole state of Georgia and our, and our student enrollment represents that. that the Southeast, we have um, 27 states represented uh, in our incoming um, class right now, which is really exciting. And, uh, and then, you know, so, so uh, the nation and beyond, um, that we as an institution have been growing, but we've been managing our growth along the way. Um, we recognize that we have, we, we were out for record enrollment. Um, we hired 100 additional new faculty members uh, over this past year. We are going to continue to hire faculty members uh, and um, in strategic places, in classes, and in disciplines that we absolutely need additional faculty members so that we can keep you on progression towards graduation when you choose to enroll here at the university. Um, but along with that, as we have grown and as our, our reputation has continued to strengthen, this institution has been seen as a, a much more traditional institution. And um, we don't really call them competitors, but institutions that you would compare us to out there in the world, and I'm not gonna name them, um, but you know who they are. Uh, we, we realize we do not have as much housing as they do. And, and those institutions are um, hundreds of years old that have uh, a long, long um, time that they've been able to build up a lot of their facilities and they've had um, time a, a, to plan and do those kinds of things. So um, we, we are planning and we are um, uh, looking towards the future when it comes to housing options for students that, that want that traditional college experience, that want to live on campus, um, which we would encourage you to do so, whether it be the Marietta campus or the Kennesaw campus. So. Uh, I'm not at liberty to talk about some of the exciting things that are coming this way, but I would tell you to stay tuned uh, because uh, I think you'll see um, here in the future some, some exciting things happening on both of our campuses. I will say this, uh, we do have, I'm much older than, than Jordan and I, I went to cinder block dorm, you know, with community baths. I had those too, I had those too. Um, our dorms <laughs> are just absolutely amazing. Yeah. The, the yeah. variety of, of options that we have uh, and they're just wonderful facilities and, and I really appreciate that Kennesaw has those. But you need, like he said earlier, apply and apply early for those. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing, speaking particular, particularly to that question, is the Marietta campus has mm -hmm. the three types of, of um, the most widely seen uh, dorm options, residence hall options. You have traditional style, like mm -hmm. Ron and I had, like Ron just talked about. Uh, you have suite style living, and you have apartment style living. So right. you, you have anything, and really a lot of that comes with changes in cost and what you want, what will make you comfortable as a student, and allow you to engage as a student. Uh, so there's a lot of options, uh, particularly on the Marietta campus. Got another question. 
Okay, uh, my student has completed the application, sent the transcript, just took the ACT this past Saturday. If his scores are not back before the early admission closes, how long will it take to hear something? Right, um, so now is a fantastic time in terms of what we're doing in admissions. Um, we have a new senior director of admissions and she has done a fantastic job working with our operations side of the office to take what was um, a, a still a very good amount of time that it takes to process an application and really cut that in three-fourths. So it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just stoked with what we've been doing in admissions. Um, re more, more often than not, during the busiest time of the year, you can see uh, a two to three week application um, decision period. So after you complete the application, we get that ACT score. Uh, it's two to three weeks. Well, she's cut that down in, in not, not that time, but really almost in three-fourths. Um, right now, it's about a, a three-day processing period, so from the time that your application is complete. Uh, but once things get really busy, which we're, we see this past year, we had almost 18,000 first-year applications to the university. That was a record number for us. You, you've already heard it mentioned that we had record enrollment this year. Um, so uh, it, it's really a quick turnaround time. When we get to the November 1 deadline, there will be a lot of applications coming in. Um, I can imagine it might take a week or two weeks to get a decision, but we, are, we know that we're getting ACT scores and SAT scores around this time period. Um, what I love about the ACT is uh, they tend to come back a little faster than the SAT, I'm gonna be honest. Usually about three to four weeks, you're getting your ACT score back. So once, once you as a student, um, or if you're talking on behalf of your student, you see the ACT score, or they send you an email saying your ACT score is ready, they're sending us that electronic file at the same time. So um, we get it pretty quick. That's it for questions right now. We got about three minutes left. Oh my gosh, okay, that's perfect. Ron, how did you get into financial aid? Oh I have to know. I almost made it. You almost made it, that's right. No, we're gonna get it out there. I think everybody wants I, to know, like, how do you end up working in financial aid? It's not one of those things that you major in in college, that's for sure. Um, I was sitting in church one Sunday. I was actually a minister. That's why I'm a seminarian, graduated mm -hmm. from seminary. Mm -hmm. um, and sitting in church and the president of the college actually wrote a note and handed it to me and said, I'd like for you to apply for a job. I was always intrigued by the college environment, uh, being a part of the college you know, campus that I was. And so I, I was offered s several jobs, but director of financial aid is one that I was offered, not knowing exactly what it was. And so that's how I came about it and have been doing it 36 years. Wow. So it's not. That's awesome. It bites you and won't let you go. So uh, <laughs> it, it was a, it's a good, good opportunity, a good profession. Ron, I think this is meant to be because you know how old I am, right? 36. 36! Yes! I love I, it. So Ron's I'm been doing this. shoes older than him. Ah, oh, that's, yeah, we were joking <laughs> earlier. Ron's been doing this since 1983. That's exactly right. That's so cool. That's exactly right. I love it. I love it. I did, I did. That's a, what, a, what an interesting story. Hold on. The better part is, did he put it in the offering plate? I don't know. I don't Because you definitely had an offering plate back then. <laughs> there weren't buckets or things. No. Uh, no. Look, we come had, on, come on. We had an offering, offering plate. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Okay, this is No, good. I have no idea. I'm going to get more of this information out of him ministers, when we leave here tonight. Ministers and presidents of colleges don't listen to the sermons at times, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, do we have another? Yeah, we have a question. Oh, no. Okay. Awesome. Um, what is something that we didn't talk about tonight that, that maybe you, you thought we were going to talk about or more even, even better, you want to leave our Facebook family with? There, there's one thing I do want to hit on very quickly and then I want to leave with something other than this because this sometimes gets a little bit daunting. The federal government selects about 30% of all the FAFSAs for an audit and that means we have to collect documents. Mm -hmm. So not only do you need to fill the FAFSA out, you need to get documents to us. And again, we don't want them, nor do we ask for them. It's the federal government yeah, that asks right. for us to look at them. So those forms have to be turned in very quickly. Um, and I'll be honest with you, we had around 1,200 students this fall that did not turn in documents in a timely fashion that had no aid and ultimately lost their classes because their forms were not here on time. So make sure if you're selected, the government will tell you immediately if you're selected that you'll have to submit documents and we'll let you know those very quickly. But last, I wanna leave everyone with this in that um, don't look at this whole process as daunting and convoluted and complex. Those are words that you can use. 
but understand we're here to help you walk you through it. We've been doing it a long time and we will certainly hold your hand and take you through this whole process and make it as simple as possible. I love it, I love it. Okay, Ron, we have a tradition. What's that? And we end with owl eyes. Can you make them with me? We're gonna do it together and then we, we let them fly away, yeah? So I, I guess you do it. You don't do it like that. <laughs> Meredith Head will come to your, your house. Do it, um, show me how to do it. So, okay, it. owl eyes. You put them together. You yes. put your index finger and thumb together. Okay. Make the owls. And, and now the way that Meredith does it is you put it over your heart. Because, over your <laughs> yeah, so that's what's most important, that's right? That's Meredith. Isn't that's it? what Meredith does. So over your heart, I think that's the right way to do it. And All she right. says they created it when she was here, so it is what it is. Um, put it over your heart, and that's allies. And then we're going to go with Hootie Who. Hootie right. Who? Yep, you ready? So look at the camera. Okay. Here we go. Hootie Who. Hootie Who. Hootie who.